Hey YouTubers, everybody out there in the YouTube land, my handful of subscribers. Once again, I'll apologize for doing this all basically live and unedited. I don't really have the software to do that. And also apologize for any radio noise in the background that may be distracting. I've realized that uh, I haven't really done a proper video for the duplexers on the family GMRS repeater. I realized I've done a general overview, but haven't really done an up-close view because they're kind of at the back of the table and hard to get a proper look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the bench now. Where I have my parts duplexers. Mobile flat pack that came in side of the Midland repeater. It's a Motorola, I'm using Motorola T1500 series, the T1504, 1503. I think what's actually on the repeater's badge says T1503. It's kind of weird. You can go online and look at the service manual. It's easily downloadable and viewable in a PDF format. As you can see, you adjust their band pass, band reject, duplexers. I believe. I believe these threaded rods adjust the notch. If you could hear the CWID of the GMRS repeater, that's what that was. I believe these knurled nuts adjust the uh, coupling between the loops or probes between the input and the output of the filter. Maybe the thing's pass band, and then I think the reject has something to do with cutting lengths of cables. I just found between the couple sets, I have three of these Motorola duplexers, and between the three sets, I found the cables that were closest to what I needed and put them on the GMRS repeater. It seems to work just fine, other than a little bit of desense. Seems to work, at least allow the thing to be functional. I guess that's where my line of acceptability for all this is, is at functional. If I can get it functional, then I have something to improve upon. Whereas if it's not doing anything, I, you know, I don't really have any ground to build on. Um, from reading the manual, this T and this coupler are very important parts. It has to be set up like this. You'll notice they're UHF duplexers, but they have, which sounds right, they have UHF, otherwise called SO239 or PL259. Uh, UHF connectors. Um, even though, you know, most people will tell you that UHF connectors not too great on UHF frequencies. And I know that sounds funny. It's probably why most people don't call them UHF connectors. Also, oh, UHF connector, it's good at UHF. 
I think at the time this connector was made, I think UHF was probably a little lower in frequency. haven't quite figured out. I've read the manual a couple times and I'm still kind of in the dark on the whole duplexer thing. I haven't really figured out what these covers. I think you can swap the locations of the probes or the loops, the coupling loops or coupling probes. I don't really know why you'd want to do that. I'll figure it out eventually. It's only a matter of time reading and thinking about it I'll eventually come up with the answer that's why I'm making this video I have this on my mind I want to understand these problems if you have any suggestions at all to what you know all the various specifics of these duplexers what I should do to tune them you know I have a signal generator I have a what appears to be a spectrum analyzer but it says it's a field strength meter it's what I use to tune the ones that are on the repeater you know it gives me a peak and I dip it and it seems to work okay but I'm not too sure recently got a frequency counter if that helps at all doubtful If you have any suggestions at all, um, anything that I need to know about these that I haven't haven't mentioned, please post it in the comments down below. Uh, stay tuned for more videos as I will make them as I come up with things to film. And as always, I hope you have a good one.